A lathe has a headstock as well as a tailstock. We place our lumber that we want to round between both points. In this scenario, normally, you really don't need anything else to use the lathe. In fact, the headstock alone can be enough to hold onto the work you're working with. The trouble comes when you're trying to work on the end, like if you want to drill a hole or if you're making a bowl. This is when a steady rest really helps out as it gives you a second point of contact that keeps your work steady. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made a stripped down version of a steady rest that uses clamps to hold it to the bed as well as the wheel arms to the body. I have a more advanced version that uses knobs that you can find at the end of this video or in the description below. These are most of the materials that you're gonna need. You'll find in the description below, I've got a website that will have all the materials, tools used, and some basic schematics for this project. You'll notice here that I've got a two by eight. It's a construction grade piece of pine. Before you go out and buy a piece of pine like this, make sure that you go to the clearance area, any place where they'll, they'll sometimes they'll cut it down into pieces. This is actually cut off. I'm guessing the rest of the board was really twisted up or chewed up in some way, but I got this for, I think a couple dollars. So look to see if you can find a clearance section where you can get the cutoffs. Right now we're gonna take this to the table saw and cut out a tongue on both sides. So let's go ahead and do that now. Before we create that channel, we're gonna first section this off at nine inches. This will leave me with a 15 inch piece and a nine inch piece. We'll raise the blade so that it's a half inch above the table. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put our board next to the blade and move our fence against the board. We're gonna make our first pass, flip it around, make a pass, flip it end over end and repeat that process again. We'll move our fence in each time and we're gonna do this until we have a half inch section on the top and on the bottom. Once we get down to that half inch, we're gonna go ahead and section this off at an inch and a half. I'll make my first pass and then I'll flip it and cut it again. And that's what we're gonna have when we're done. With my nine inch section, I wanna do the same thing, but I wanna create a channel in the end grain on both sides. So I'll loosen my fence and I wanna find roughly the center of my stock with that blade. Once I find it, I'll go ahead and lock the fence. Now I need to make a groove in here that's an inch and three eighths, but I don't wanna do that with my table saw. It's a lot for it to try to do at one time. I don't wanna have kickback or any other problems like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with my blade lower. I'll hog it out and then I'll raise the blade up and we'll do this again. Just like before, I'm gonna move my fence again so that I can keep making that channel. I need to make it wide enough that a half inch drill bit will fit right inside of the groove. Now that this fits inside of the end, I know exactly how far my fence needs to be away from the blade to get that perfect center cut. So what I'll do now is raise this to full inch and three eighths so that I can get that cut. Instead of moving the fence away from the blade, every time I cut, I'm gonna move it back towards the center of the blade until I get to the center and I clean everything out. I'll set my fence so that it's an inch and a half away from the blade. And like before, I'm gonna make one cut, flip it, and then cut it all the way through. And I'll do that just two times to finish this up. And that's what we've got when we're done. I'll cut the sidewalls down to their final size with my sled. Now, when you put your pieces together, it's gonna look like this. It's a simple frame, uses a mortise and tenon style joint to hold it all together but you're gonna find on the edge that we have this giant gap right here. With this gap down here, we have two different options in how we want to proceed with this project. This is from the advanced video that I made, but basically these fit right inside these tracks. Now you have the option to use either knobs, which is what I use for my advanced version, or to just use some basic F clamps. 
If you do decide to do knobs, you'll have a square dowel that will go right inside like this. And then on your pieces, you'll have that hole that will go straight through and then you can attach a knob and then tighten it on the other side. Of course, this will be on both sides. But if you just wanna clamp this on and be done with it and not have to worry about those knobs, then you really only need to make that full size width piece that will fit inside that channel. I'm gonna show you how you can cut both of these right now. I'll be using the stock that's left over from the wall that we made. This is the longer edge. Both of the examples that I'm gonna show you is going to involve the fence being a half inch away from the blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my blade at a half of an inch. With a method that uses knobs, I'm gonna have my blade a half inch away from the tabletop. You can see that I ran it through one side, flipped it, and did the opposite side. I raised my blade to the thickness and I'll go ahead and cut these off. If you plan on just using F clamps, we'll go ahead and raise the blade now seven eighths away from the tabletop. Again, this is gonna be a half inch away from the blade and I'm basically gonna do the same thing that I did for the first option. Now I'll need to move my blade over to 7 8 of an inch. I'll go ahead and run this through to cut these off. Option one, option two. Now with my pieces cut, I'm not gonna show you how to do the knob version. If you are interested in how I did that one, just watch the other one, but I think it should be pretty self-explanatory. You're just gonna stick your pieces like this, stick them in. And then I do encourage you to add another piece, like a 3 8 inch piece in the top, to close this off. That way it's just all glued together. The clamp up for this is really easy. I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue on the top, on the bottom, on both pieces, as well as on the side. I'm gonna add a little bit of glue in the inside here. I'm also gonna add some glue to the front and back faces, also on the back side of this. So all four sides are covered. We'll use a couple F clamps to hold this together on the ends. One thing I forgot, I <laughs> want to add glue on the inside here. And now I'll come in here with a square and make sure that everything looks good. That corner's good. That corner looks good. That corner is off. I added some clamps and I'm just gonna clean up the glue and let it dry. When things were dry, I cleaned up both ends where some of my stock was hanging out. I also cut my scrap piece of wood that I used to make the top and bottom down to five and a quarter inches. I wanna make a half lap with a bottom that will connect to my leftover scrap piece of wood. First, I hog out the distance for the bottom frame by making several cuts with the table saw. With my five and a quarter inch piece, I wanna cut out a tongue that will fit in the section that I've already cut out. So I found the thickness, which is three quarters of an inch, and I wanna have three quarters of an inch, obviously, that's gonna be sticking out. So I'll take my ruler and find that three quarter inch mark that I need to make, and that's gonna be right here. So I wanna make sure that I put my three quarter inch section against the fence. The thickness of the tongue that needs to be cut out is gonna be an inch and a half on my block. I will need to go up an inch and a half. I don't like my table saw cutting that much, so I'm gonna go ahead and make my first cut and then raise the blade and do it again. And as you can see, that's what I'm looking for right there. We'll take the pieces and we're gonna glue them together. With my more advanced version, I used a dovetail to hold this in. And I like that a little bit better because it is a mechanical joint. While glue will work to hold this in place, I'm gonna add a few screws to give it more of a mechanical advantage like the dovetail on my other one. I've got my pieces cut here and they are exactly nine inches by one and a half inches. And you can see that they're really kind of difficult to move in here. If you'd like to cut a little bit off on each side so that it's a little bit easier to slide in here, that's fine. But first we're going to mark out and map out the holes on the front of it so that things line up better later on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the pieces off. I'm gonna have an upper and lower assembly. Again, there's a diagram on the website, all of it's there. I'm just gonna go over it real quick with you now. If you chose to use knobs, I'm gonna go ahead and show that as well as the other. Obviously, if you're not gonna use knobs at all, just clamps, then this won't apply to yours. For the knobs, I'm gonna go ahead and mark out 11 sixteenths. 
and I'm going to get both sides. I want to go a half of each side, so I've got it set at three quarters of an inch. And those are the spots for the knobs. With my upper assembly, I've still got this set at three quarters of an inch. I'm just going to go ahead and mark all the way across. I'll set this to three and three thirty seconds. I'll go ahead and make a mark here as well as over here. These two markings here are where my upper wheels will fit on. Now I'll set this to a half of an inch and I'm gonna run this along the bottom like that. And I wanna go halfway in, which of course is gonna be four and a half inches. I'll go ahead and mark this. You can always go to the other side and mark it to see if you're close. And right in the center of those two lines, that's gonna be my center. I need to cut out a channel on my upper assembly. So I'll set this for three and 27 30 seconds, and I'll come in on both sides and draw a line. Now I'll set this for five eighths, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a line across here like that. So I'll have my two wheels here, and then I'll have that cutout right there. And this cutout will just allow me to get my wheels a little bit closer to each other so that I can do a little bit thinner things. I'll mark this section here. So we'll cut this out and we'll drill the holes and we'll come back. Each of the knob holes on the sides are gonna be drilled out with a three eighths bits. And the wheel holes are gonna obviously depend on the diameter of your wheels that you use. Mine are 5 16 If you wanna use the ones that I have, those will be on the webpage. With my blade raised to 5 8 I'll go ahead and cut that little channel out. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna go ahead and shave off a little bit on each side, which will allow me to move this along in the track a little bit easier. Back here at the bench, I've got my frame. This will be pointing towards the headstock. The tail stock will be on this side. I've got the bottom assembly here, and I've got the top assembly right here. I've already added my bolts to the wheels. I'll go ahead and slide these through like that. I'll use three lock nuts on the back side to make sure that it all stays in place. And make sure you do put a washer between the wood and the wheel, otherwise you'll be fighting every time that it spins around the, the wood. And there we go, that's pretty much it. I will say that when you use this, this wheel will stay on this side. And this set of wheels can either go on this side or flip around to the back side. And again, you have that little bit of a window there so that you can get a little bit closer to something that's very thin. But let's take this to the lathe and we'll try it out. Before we get started, what's really important to understand is that first, you need to have something that's going to obviously hold it on this side. You can't just put a spur in here and then run it with a steady rest. It has to be connected in some way on this side. The second thing is, obviously, it needs to be rounded. Having square points is not gonna work with it. It's gonna need to be rounded and you're gonna need to have at least I'd say about two inches of rounded area for this to, to sit on. The full depth of mine will do about six inches altogether. If you have a lathe that has a much lower bed, which allows you to do bowls and things like that, this is perfectly scalable as far as I'm concerned. I, I think that you could scale it up as much as you want. Attaching this to your lathe might be completely different than mine, but I have a hole here in the center. This fits on top of it. I'll take a scrap piece of wood, it goes underneath, and then I can put an F clamp through the bottom like this. I haven't tightened it down all the way, but that's just so that I can get the arms on. The arms will slide on like this. They can attach either to the front or the back. I'm gonna slide this back a little bit. If I put this on here, you can see that this spins around just fine. But if I were to have this a little bit farther back, it wouldn't clear it. So be very mindful of that. That's where I'd want to clamp it right here. The handle goes on the back. That way this clears this allows you to tighten it. We'll go ahead and tighten this down on the bottom. And then the bottom one, you can either do it this way or this way. Make sure that all three contacts are being hit before I put this last one on. Now, make sure that you really tighten these down a lot. If there's any vibration, they could move around. It's also a good idea to stop and check it every once in a while to make sure that everything is still tight. All three wheels are engaged. As you should always do with a lathe, make sure you stand back and turn it on and see if everything is working right.
And that's what a steady rest is and how you make a really simple one. I do have one that's a little bit more complicated. You can watch that at the end of this video or it's in the description below. But let me know in the comments what you think about this. I appreciate you sticking around to the end. If you are interested in making this, I've got the full plans down below. There's absolutely no cost. Everything is absolutely free. Thank you so much for watching and keep making things.